Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Here we are again on a Thursday evening, 153greatfish.com. Uh, tonight, I have a topic for a friend of mine who was dismayed that somebody had left the faith. Let me tell you something. There's a reason why they leave the faith, and there's a reason why they cannot get into the faith. But let's pray first. Jesus, we love you, Lord. We praise you, mighty God. I thank you, Lord for revealing truth to babes and not to the wise, because there's a quality that the babes have. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, our topic tonight is the restoration of Christianity. That's right. Christianity needs to be restored. Let's go into it, shall we? So we begin with our PowerPoint. And... Romans 8, 5 through 8. For they that are after the flesh are intensely interested about the things of the flesh. In other words, it's their first priority. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is hatred, hostile, and opposed towards God. For it is not submissive to the spiritual law of God, neither indeed can it be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. How do I know if I am in the flesh, if I am carnally minded? Well, it's all about our priorities, folks. If my primary interest is not in being led by the Spirit. A lot of people want to be purpose-led, okay? uh, or purpose-driven, I should say. <laughs> When you get the Holy Ghost, you get the purpose. You know, if I've made my purpose from a man-made book, I am not spirit-led. Face it. Let's go on. The restoration of Christianity. Superstition versus being led by the Spirit. Mark 16, 16 through 17 says this, He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Uh, I took out all the King James punctuation because it made this verse sound completely different. But he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. First Peter 3.21, baptism does now save us. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They'll cast out devils, they'll speak with new tongues, they'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They'll drink deadly poison and won't harm them. And they'll take on the serpent and have victory. Superstition always follows after signs or events. I call these pseudo signs and circumstances. That's not the way it works, folks. This is the way it works. To be spirit led, we follow after Jesus voice, hearing it in prayer. Then the signs or the confirmations follow us, the work of faith. That is when we obey the voice that we heard in prayer. That's how to be spirit led. Or you can read a man-made book and have a driven life, or you can be led by the voice of Almighty God, Jesus Christ. Logic versus revelation. Here's why people don't get it. 2 Corinthians 12, 2 through 4, Paul said, I knew a man in Christ over 14 years ago who was caught up to the third heaven. Remember, the third heaven is God's domain alone. Whether he was in the, in the body or out of the body, God only knows because I don't know. After he was caught up to paradise, he heard unspeakable words, which is forbidden for a man to utter. There are some things that are unexplainable with human logic. We call this divine revelation. John 8 says this, Jesus said, Why don't you understand my speech? It is because you are not able to hear my word. Because you are of the devil, your father, and the lusts of your father you desire to do. He was a murderer from the beginning. He stood not in the truth. And because I speak the truth, you do not believe me. Logic is the problem. Logic versus revelation. Logic, like inductive reasoning, it's human and it's absent of divine revelation. It is the realm of the flesh and it reaches its, its zenith at the top of the human skull bone. It is works of the law, not the hearing of faith. You don't receive the Holy Ghost by works of the law, logic. Many people don't receive the Holy Spirit because they try to think it in. 
as opposed to hear it in through the hearing of faith. Can you say praise the Lord? Logic is human, which means it's limited. However, divine revelation from the truth of the Spirit is divine, and it's not explainable. Revelation is like saving faith. It's imparted from God to those who have love of the truth and are willfully obedient to the voice of the Spirit. Listen, if we don't have love of the truth, we're in bad shape. Delusion is imparted to those who do not have love of the truth and are only able to follow the logic of human reasoning. You can read about this, and I suggest you do. Take out 2 Thessalonians 2, 10 through 12 where the Bible says that God gives delusion to those who don't have love of the truth and they're only following man-made fairy tales. John 16, Jesus said this, I have yet many things to tell you, but you are not able to receive now. But when he arrives, the spirit of truth, he will lead you into all truth. And who is that he? It's Jesus himself as the Holy Ghost. Jesus said unto Thomas, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth, you know him and you have seen him. Jesus is the only Father you can see, but he's also the Son. That's the truth. He's the Father and the Son. And it says in 1 John 2, 22, If you don't believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Father and the Son, your antichrist. There's two big spirits in this world that oppose God, the spirit of Gog and Magog and the spirit of Antichrist. We don't want to be either one of those. The spirit of Gog and Magog is anti-Semitic, like Martin Luther was, or it's against that Jesus is Father and Son. That's Antichrist. Logic won't get you there, but revelation will. The unutterable words of God. Some things cannot be explained. Now look at the revelation of Isaiah. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called. Here we go. Wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace shall there be no end. And upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, to establish it with judgment, with justice, from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. This is the revelation of Isaiah. Jesus is Father and Son. He's the counselor. He's the comforter. He's wonderful. Who can explain it? Let me just say it real clear. The doctrine of the Trinity is human reasoning, human logic, trying to explain something that's unexplainable, how God can be both Father and Son. Jesus can be both man and divine. That's unexplainable. It's a mystery of godliness. 1 Timothy 3.16 says that God was manifest in the flesh. If you try to explain God with the doctrine of the Trinity, which is a man-made doctrine, developed from 197 A.D. to 1272 A.D. by a bunch of <laughs> scholars who couldn't ever learn it but never could get to the truth, let me tell you something. Three does not equal one. Not in your spreadsheet not in your computer, not anywhere, but in the phantasm, the philosophy of men. So his name is going to be wonderful. It's going to be Counselor. It's going to be Mighty God. It's going to be Everlasting Father. Do you hear that? His name, the Messiah, will be called Everlasting Father, the only Father you can see. And he'll be the Son, the Prince of Peace, the Divine Ruler, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. If you see anybody else other than Jesus as God, you are in a fantasy of philosophy. Get out of there. For neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That's the name of Jesus. Jesus. The name of Jesus. How do we get saved? By the name of Jesus. Well, here we go. Matthew 28, 19 says, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. So seven days later, after Jesus said that, to teach and baptize and use the name, what did his disciples do? Peter said, who had the keys to the kingdom, repent and be baptized. Who? Every one of you. 
including all the people out there who have already been baptized in titles, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, which is a no-name baptism. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the only name under heaven whereby we must be saved. And when that guy baptizes you in the name of Jesus, he should say, I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. He should say exactly what Peter said, not what Billy Graham said, not what Martin Luther said, not what Pope Pius said, not what uh, uh, any of these fake TV preachers are saying. You need to do what Peter said. Get baptized in the name of Jesus, every one of you, because it's a revelation that the name of Jesus is the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Who can explain it? There are no words to utter that are lawful to explain this. It is the mystery that God was manifest in the flesh. This is the truth if you can receive it. And if you can't receive the truth, you're welcome to keep your delusion Get out of this kind of a church, folks. Find somebody who will baptize you in Jesus' name. Follow them. You don't need to be purpose-driven. You need to be spirit-led. Can you say praise the Lord? I'm talking about the restoration of Christianity here today. And uh, one final thing that I'd like to say, and I'm going to go back to the uh, splash screen here. What I'd like to say is that this is the highest revelation that you can get, but there's no words to describe it. If you're in the flesh, you're going to believe in a man-made doctrine that only goes to the top of your skull bone, the doctrine of the Trinity. There's no such thing. There is no Holy Trinity. Here's some words and phrases that are not in the Bible. God the Son, it's not there. The Eternal Son, not there. Trinity, not there. How come? Now I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to give you a little bit of a testimony. When I first came into the Jesus name faith, okay, and I was struggling because a man from the Alliance Bible Church came to me and gave me a book. He said, the book said that I was in a cult because I believed in Jesus name baptism. And here was a guy who was this huge fantasy uh, philosopher, and uh, he wrote this three inch thick book. And as I read it through it, it shook my faith. And I thought, oh my goodness. So I got on my knees. And I asked the Lord when I was on my knees, Lord, are you a trinity? And immediately two questions came to me. Does the Old Testament indicate that I am a trinity? That was the first thing I heard, the voice of the Spirit. And I thought, no, Lord, Shema Israel, Deuteronomy 6, 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. That's the first commandment, Mark 12, 29. And then the second question came to me while I was on my knees in prayer. Does God change? Malachi 3.6 I am the Lord, I change not, lest ye sons of Jacob be consumed. The voice of the Spirit. We need to be Spirit-led, not by man-made doctrines like the Trinity from Tertullian to Thomas Aquinas. It's false. I hope I help somebody today. If you're listening to somebody who's saying, I can prove the Trinity. I've had people tell me that. They can't prove nothing. They've got to drop into philosophy. Neoplatonism. To explain their mathematical formula, which is a formula of logic of the flesh. It doesn't compute. Three does not equal one. And if you think it does, you're not going to pass math class. <laughs> God is not a liar. He's not going to uh, use something that's false to prove something's true. He doesn't do that. Well... I did this for my friend. I pray that this helps somebody today. God bless you in Jesus' name. We'll see you next time here in another edition of 153greatfish.com.
touchdown. Having fired the imagination of a generation, a ship like no other.